I just wanted to say a little bit about who my brother was and who my brother was to me, and I mean, still is, but um, growing up, you used to talk to your friends um, when you're a little girl, you know, and you, you talk to them about who your hero is and uh, what that means to you. And for most kids, a hero is an athlete or, you know, some celebrity or a famous scientist. And to me, I would always say my hero is my brother. And uh, he's five years older than me, and he's really shaped who I am today. And I really wouldn't be the person that I am right now without him um, guiding me and helping me along. And um, every step of my life, he's been there to encourage me and uh, give me more drive to pursue the things that I want to pursue. I was a very shy, timid girl. <laughs> um, he would be very proud of me for standing up here talking to people. <laughs> um, and he encouraged me to come out of my shell. And I was a ballet dancer, and um, I was always really, it was really hard for me to get up on stage and expose myself in that vulnerable way. And he would email me from college and just say, you're doing this for you, you follow your heart, um, you just, you go fly like an angel like you do. And um, I just, he, he was always there for me. And as he got worse, he'd call on me for help. I would drive to his house and do his dishes. Um, when he moved back in, I would drive him to all of his doctor's appointments. Um, I helped care for him when I graduated from college for a year. And it gradually got so that he got so sick that it was too hard for me. And I would leave his room sobbing every single day. And um, it's like losing someone, but they're not, he's, he's still there. Um, and I'm, I'm, but I'm grieving for him like a death. Um, and it's hard to put into words because when somebody dies, you grieve and, and you're able to move on even though it still hurts and it's still really sad. But for me, every day I wake up and I realize that I can't talk to him, I can't hug him, I can't console him and make him feel better. I don't even know what's wrong with him. Um, and there's nobody there to support him because everybody around us is telling him that there's nothing wrong with him and he needs therapy. <laughs> and um, it's the hardest thing in the world to not be able to be there for the person that is the biggest part of your life. And um, he was my best friend. I talk to him every single day and I now can't even make eye contact. I can't give him a hug. Um, I haven't talked to him in years. I haven't heard his voice. I have videos on my phone of him laughing and I will play them to myself so that I can remember the sound of his voice. And uh, it's just, it's the hardest disease. And I, he used to say when he could still talk that he wished he had AIDS or cancer because then people wouldn't tell him that there's nothing wrong with him. And uh, he would at least know what was wrong with him. And all I wanna do, uh, when I graduated college, I told him I'd love to raise money and and get, fun, get some funding for research for this disease. But what I really want to do is let patients know that they're not alone because he feels alone and abandoned. And my main goal was to tell them, you're not alone and we care about you and we're trying to figure out what's wrong with you. And that's kind of about what today is about as well, is just we want to raise money, we want to get the research going, and we want patients to know that they are not suffering in silence because we're fighting for them. And we will always fight for them. So thank you for coming.